Hello explorers and welcome to another video. I'm Daniel and today we are going to go through four easy steps to create an object classification network and add that to an Android application. So here is the result that we are going for in this application, the TensorFlow Lite example application. We will put in this custom a network that we will train and what we will train it for is looking for this lantern and we also will look for something that I called Didi. It's a toy, some kind of kids show uses this toy. I'm trying to figure out uh, how to uh, <laughs> actually watch that and actually get a good result. Later on I actually get 90% in a specific angle and a specific uh, setting, but it all depends on your input data. Here you see the rubber duck, I got 98% on that one, so that's a really good one. Here's a different setting and so on. But we're not gonna look at all of these examples, we are just looking at a few. So let's look into the different steps that we're gonna do. We jump over here. I have some directories here with the different data here. So if we look at Didi, we have some uh, images here. So this is actually a lot of images of the same toy that I told my, my child, my little boy, to go out and take a lot of images. And he's quite good a photo photographer, so he went out and got me a lot of images. And I wanted around 100 images of each. So let's see here, this is 83, so we don't have that many lanterns. We have 94 rubber ducks and Didi. We started with 118 images of Didi. Uh, but this, these images are not good enough. So that was step one, fetch the actual data. Next up, what I did is I created a work directory and took each of these images and made them square and a specific image ratio. So this is the next part of this work. So this is part number two. I will create images of the same ratio, in this case, 480 times 480. And so these are all the images that I used for Didi and it, I put Didi in different situations and in different placements, so it actually was a good set of images of Didi. So that's step number two. Step number three is that we need to install some dependencies. We need to install TensorFlow, TensorFlow 2, and we also need to install TensorFlow Hub uh, image uh, make image classifier 0.6. So the, this is what makes it so easy now because the only thing we need to do when we have installed these, so we need to have Python and pip so we can install these packages and then we just need to run this command down here, make image classifier, we specify which directory that holds these three subdirectories of our images, and then the network that we want to start training from. So what we are doing is relearning or transfer learning of a network, and so that we start from one network and then we do a quick fix and relearn that network to handle these three ob uh, objects. Next up, we need an image size. And then we have the saved model. This is where they, it will save the actual model that we get out, that we, um, the TensorFlow model, not the TensorFlow Lite model, the TensorFlow model. And we need to save that first and then convert it to the TensorFlow model. And if you are having a TensorFlow use case where you need that model, this can be used here as well. Next up, we have the label file, uh, and I call it class uh, text. La class labels text, and then we have our TensorFlow Lite output file. That's the file that I want to get out and actually use in my network. And lastly, we have summaries there. This was not implemented in the version that I got of this image classifiers. I just removed that because I didn't really need the log directory. If you have a newer versions, perhaps this is 
there or perhaps it was deprecated in some version but I just removed that so you don't need to have that in the model so we can move that there so if we jump over here so I will actually run this model on a virtual machine because my main machine is running a different model as at the moment but as you see here I run it with the same parameters that I had in my file, I even have the same image size because the network uses images of the size two to four, but they are square. So in order to get the best results, your images needs to be squared as well. Uh, this will not take that long to run. It will take a little while. So while this is starting up and actually creating our model, doing some uh, transfer learning in the, on my machine, I will go and fetch a coffee and I'll be right back. Perhaps you can fetch your favorite beverage during this process. See you in a while. Tell me what you had to go and drive me so crazy. Now I'm feeling lost without you and I just can't be without you, baby. Won't you all night long? Mm. Ugh, hot. Mm. So it's actually ending up here and creating the last part, saving down my model and getting ready for this. So now we have a new exported, new mobile TensorFlow Lite model. I will copy that over to my main machine. And I have already prepared this, of course. So in this directory here, you have my TensorFlow Lite model and my class uh, file. If we go over to the Android Studio project, I have it over here, in, in the apps directory, sources, main assets, these files are already present. So I've copied those in here. And then after that, we need to do some modification to a few files. In this repository, they are already done. But you, if you download this repository from GitHub, you can at least know how it's actually set up and how you can add your more models. And we will also talk a little bit about how it actually works, this example. So we have done step one, gather data. Step two, refine data. Step three, train the model. Step four, create the application. So in this application, we have a classifier and I added a new model here, a float custom model. And uh, so that was I added in the classifier. In the strings array, I also added the string that will be outputted on screen. So this is the float custom name that we saw earlier. Then I will create a new class. I will copy that over from another float class. Uh, so this will be the classifier custom mobile net and these variables here are set up for a float mobile net. Then you have a mean and standard, which is between the uh, zero and 256, which is the highest value you can have an RGB. And then you have a mean and standard of these values of the probability from zero to one. And then I just changed the names down here for the model path and the label file. And that's everything that is required in order to get this up and running and have a custom model. So you can add as many custom models as you like to this example and it will just work. So how does this actually work? In the camera connection fragment, I'm gonna go through from camera to the actual um, inference. So in the camera, we set up a surface and we have a preview reader that reads the preview image. And this preview image will be sent to an image listener. And the image listener is actually this object, but an object that will inherit this object. So we use this fragment inside of an, something that is, um, uh, inheriting the camera activity that is called the classifier activity. So the classifier activity inherits the camera activity and have an on-image available listener. 
And so if we look at that on image available, which will be triggered when the preview actually sends you an image. So here we have an image reader. We will acquire the last image. We will take that image, get the planes of that image, and then we will get the U, U, Y, U, V bytes from that. Um, so this fill bytes will actually give us that information. If we go down here, it will just take that buffer here from the different planes and put that into this byte, byte array. Uh, so if we go back up here, this image converter will be run when we are getting the uh, RGB bytes in order to convert it from YUV uh, to RGB. So we will get an RGB image back here. If you look into the classifier application here, when it processes an image, it will run this in the background. It will recognize that image, which is an RGB bitmap, which comes from this get RGB bytes. So we will have the camera activity taking a preview image, transfer it over to RGB bytes, putting that into a frame bitmap, and that bitmap is then put into our classifier, and we do a recognized image on that classifier. And if we go into the classifier here, in the recognize image um, function, it will take this bitmap, it will load that image into a bu buffer, and then in the TensorFly light, class, it will run that buffer, get an output probability buffer, and that buffer in turn, we will uh, run through a probability processor that will create labels and probability. And that's what we see in our GUI. So this is pretty much how this application is structured. If you are more curious, all the code is here on the TensorFlow GitHub site. There is an examples repository with more examples for other different use cases that you can look into. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Are you using any image classification or transfer learning in any of your projects? Please leave a comment in the comment section down below and answer that question. And I really hope to see you in the next video.